Hey guys, looks like we're live. I hope so at least. Um, good afternoon. So today, well, first of all, I'm Dave Brody. I'm the founder and CEO of Paleo on the Go. And I am joined with Beth Romansky. And she is the founder of My Healthy Transitions Health Coaching, along with um, having the Wellness Warriors, sorry, Wellness Warriors po podcast. Wellness Warriors Radio. There you go. You got it. He <laughs> is a uh, sugar detox expert, and uh, we'll be doing more of these Facebook lives. So please, um, people out there, let us know. Let us know if there's any topics that you'd like to see covered. Um, so we keep hearing so much about sugar in the real food circles, as well as the mainstream media. I know for myself, if I have a, a bunch of sugar, I'm going to be craving more of it. So it seems like a really vicious cycle. Uh, I wanted to get straight into some questions with Beth, and then we'll take questions from you, so uh, the audience. Um, so I guess, I don't know if that was really a question, but a statement about my cravings with sugar, so hopefully we'll get to some solutions. Um, but first of all, we've covered, we covered a lot of information on our latest newsletter, about you, but if you could please give us a little bit of background on how you got into natural health and your practice, your podcast, all that. Yeah, well, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been such a pleasure connecting with you, and I have been a fan of paleo on the go for some time now. When I transitioned to a paleo way of eating, it was because of my own health challenges, which I think you also have in common, and I'm sure many of your community has in common why we find ourselves here. So it's really about finding, you know, that path, forging your own way to what health means to you. And it's constantly a journey for me, and I'm sure as many other people feel as well. But it's really, you know, without going into great detail, which I do share more on the podcast um, and also just with my own community about my own struggles with my health, it's been uh, you know, really um, eye-opening to me to find that, you know, sometimes you just feel like really lost. And then when you find a community who gets you and you find like integrative solutions and that you're not crazy, you kind of just feel like the world opens up. And that kind of just opened up my eyes. And as my, my health got better, um, you know, when I was eating more real food than ever, and it was just like, Everything just felt like it was like I should help other people with that message. And so, um, you know, I didn't really know what I was going to do at that time. And I still don't really. Um, but at the time, I, I just thought, you know, maybe I should get some sort of credential to be a little bit more formal in helping people. And I want to give back. And um, I like to educate. Um, my, also, I have a role in a professional uh, capacity. I uh, develop programs for um, integrative health, um, continuing education. So I work at the Maryland University of Integrative Health as a program director for professional and continuing education. So this is just beyond my belief, my world of what I see and I hear and I'm learning every day. But when I initially wanted my own certification, I just thought, well, you know, I heard about um, IN, Institute for Integrative Nutrition, which I'm sure many people have heard of as well. And I, I went through their program, you know, got a health coach certification, started a practice, started work full, and somehow I found my way into the sugar world. And it's amazing because, you know, at the time before, you know, I was feeling better, it was like I was trying to be healthy and I thought I was being healthy, right? Um, you know, following the conventional dietary advice that you hear and low fat, you know, calories, like all this stuff out there. And you know, I felt awful, right? And, um, you know, just so many ways. And, you know, I found that, you know, through real food, and particularly a paleo style of eating, which I'm a lot more flexible with, but I found my own sort of way of modifying that, like a AIP paleo, you know, I kind of go back and forth depending on, um, you know, what my needs are. And, but I think the sugar free lifestyle is something anybody can follow, right? No matter what, if they're, um, you know, whatever food tribe they belong to, you know, keto, paleo, AIP, you know, sugar is really the one thing that you can say you shouldn't have a lot of it. And it's kind of gets out of control, even in the paleo sphere, right? You can consume sugars, they're healthy sugars. And we'll get into that later. 
But I'm kind of going in circles here. So really, I just wanted to make an impact, help people because of my own health challenges. And it's just been a crazy journey that um, I've somehow become a sugar expert. And I would like to share that it has a personal meaning to me because as I got into this specialization and kind of learned more about it, I started running sugar detox groups. Now, my mom was one of the most, she was supportive of me, but she was one who was like, I'll never do that. And I thought before I did this, I'll never do that. I thought I was, you know, like I could not pass up like, you know, fruit, one of the things, right? Like just all those things. But I was hangry all the time, you know, eating every two hours and not ever feeling like satisfied. Like those are some signs that we'll get into to see, you know, how do you know if you need like a sugar cleanse or detox, right? Or need to back off. Um, but she was actually then, she got on the bandwagon after, I don't know why, but I just put her in one of my groups and she started to learn. And now she's, you know, like 72 and the biggest advocate telling all these people about, you know, her sugar free, you know, balls that she makes. And so during one of my detoxes last year, my own father was, at, he was not on the on the road of this, this path, this health path. He just looked at me, you know, whatever, whatever she's doing. Um, you're kind of weird, but it turns out that he started to not be able to see. And so that's not a good thing. Right. And so originally he thought it was going to be like something with his eyesight. Well, I kind of saw what was happening with his diet and his lifestyle. And I was able to get him to, you know, acknowledge that, you know, he had a, well, he needs to go to the doctor first of all. And he was identified of having a stroke, a heart attack, like all these things, but it was really um, uncontrolled diabetes. And so through my ability to help my mom help him what to eat, now I'm a health coach, so I don't prescribe or do any of that, but just by giving them some guidance, you know, so if you are in that significant health challenge, his blood sugar went down from 400, it was almost 400, which is really high guys. And it went down to almost 190 within a week of just diet alone. So this is why I'm passionate about this topic, not just mm -hmm. because everybody wants to lose a little bit of body fat or, you know, have less cravings, but there is something more behind this, just health-wise. Yeah. Besides losing whole pounds, for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's a great benefit for some people who don't have that. But I think for me, it's also that I was able to help my own family. And that's great that they were uh, on board, obviously in – you know, your mom first and then your dad, but, um, it takes time, right? Even yeah, for me, for sure. I used to put four Splendas in my tea, like, you know, every day and thinking, well, you know, why am I craving sugar and sweet foods and, you know, all these, yeah. all this stuff. And it's like, well, duh, now I know better, but, um, you know, I was never, I'm still not perfect by any means, but I'm definitely, I see, and I look back over the years about how small changes really add up to big results. And you, I could see why the the sugar focus is so important to you now, but it seems like that was an area you focused on before you helped your mom, before you helped your dad. Uh, did you just see a, a need or was there more reason that you kind of wanted to carve out that um, niche? Well, one of the things that I work, you know, limited one-on-one -on -one with clients to really design custom wellness, you know, plans. And we cover more than just diet and, you know, you know, nutrition, which is kind of where I'm a nerd, but I love to educate. I love to teach. That's kind of what my, my deal is in all of my worlds. And so I wanted to run group programs and that's one really good way as a health coach to run a sugar detox program, because you can get a lot of people that, you know, may just be, um, you know, not ready to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but you can educate and teach in that format. So that's really why that sort of mm -hmm. topic interested me in terms of the teaching modality. And then, you know, sugar detoxes are popular. So I was just, you know, mm -hmm. kind of gotten more research and it just really, it really just, um, excites me because still I find things that yeah. sugar is hiding in and I post them all over social media and I show, you know, and it's fun for me because it's just everywhere and it's always new and fresh. Mm -hmm. um, I guess this would be changing gears a little bit, but um, you'd mentioned we're kind of a, a part of a group that's pretty knowledgeable, but it seems to me that there's 
people that consider themselves healthy that are that are still consuming too much sugar um, and they have an issue with it, uh, do you experience the, that or do you think that same way or do you experience that? Yeah, so it's kind of like the clean eating myth, right? And so that's a really vague, nebulous category and term. Everybody has a different interpretation of it. So even if you are you know, eating clean, right, whatever that means to you. A lot of times when I say that I do sugar detox programs, people will then go into um, describing to me what they eat and they're like, oh yeah, I'm trying to cut back on sugar. And then they tell me all about it and I'm just like, great, that's good for you. You know, and if they ask me more questions, but in my mind I'm thinking, that still counts as sugar. Because in a detox situation it's different than just eating healthy so there are natural sugars that we would include on a healthy paleo or aip diet which are great but they can also you know sneak in in other ways in foods that convert to sugar in the body and that's where more of the science comes into it and how in the program that we'll talk about with the programs that I run, we teach a little bit more specifically about glucose. And so there's sugar that you eat and consume, but then there's also the sugar that is in your blood sugar, right? Like your, your bloodstream. So that's glucose. So plus there's a lot of sneaky names for sugar that you may not really realize. There's over 60 names for sugar. And, you know, even like coconut sugar is an added sugar, even raw honey, which was great in moderation. But if you look at the, you know, the balance of what people are eating, it's also, you know, to, something to consider in a clean, healthy eating diet. And then also, um, I think that there's the tendency to like, now it's great. Okay. So we have Paleo has become really more mainstream, but now we've become more processed paleo, right? So it's cool because I go to my organic market or, you know, Whole Foods or whatever, and it's like you're a kid in a candy store, literally with the healthy junk food, you know? And yeah. so I think all those things kind of factored in, make it a lot more complex than just saying, um, you know, I, I don't really eat sugar, but do you really? Or... Maybe you just have a sweet tooth because there's also the, the fact that like if you are doing like stevia or some of those artificial natural sweeteners or eating a lot of sweet foods, sometimes it just conditions your taste buds. So sometimes it's nice just to get a cleanse or reset just on the palate. Mm -hmm. And then with sugar intake, obviously it varies by um, person. So I'm sure yeah. you working one on one, uh, you know, you're might be working with someone who has to, it doesn't matter, natural sugars, anything. Right. It has to be a complete sugar detox. And that's what a detox really is. It's really about that complete cleanse and reset. And it's kind of like, you know, the elimination diet, which, you know, if you are doing AIP, you get it. Because once you remove foods and then we go through the process towards the end of reintroducing them strategically, you realize you're more in tune with what you personally can tolerate or react to, but without that removal process and renew process, like maybe, you know, a couple times a year or at least once a year, you don't really, you can kind of lose track of that. And that's also a benefit of doing a sugar detox is because there's nothing that you need in sugar. There's no sugar, like added sugar. There's, you know, sugar, the, the white stuff that people think of, there's no nutrients in that you don't need it, you know? So it's not like you're removing something you would ever need in your body. We do need glucose to function, but the way that we can structure our macronutrients can really make up for that. And that's what we do through a detox program is really balancing macronutrients with also the right um, nutrient dense foods and just getting a lot of that process mm -hmm. stuff out, plus the sweet stuff. So yeah. Definitely. Um, what about uh, maybe we kind of covered it when we talked about, I mean, I think it's great. There's so many much better options out there. Right. But even 
kind of the people in the know seem to be a little bit, uh, I don't know, it's almost like marketing can kind of trump reasoning and facts and stuff like that. What are, besides, I, I guess you have, it, it seems like, you know, a lot of the buzzwords that's not processed kind of, um, that's the case, but then it still has a real high amount of sugar. So it happens a lot. And yeah. that's what I love. Like, like I love finding those things. It's horrible, but I love it. So mm. one great example where sugar is hiding is those like green juices and all those. I mean, you wouldn't believe like there's like a whole like shelf of green juices now. But if you look at the back of those, I would say 99.9% .9 unless they're all vegetables. And again, there's no fiber in that anyway. So, you know, that's another problem, which we'll get to in a second. But um, I know that the one juice that I found just recently was, I think, like uh, over 50 grams of sugar. Mm -hmm. Put that in context. You're not supposed to have. So, okay, little math. Four grams equals one teaspoon of sugar. Okay. So for adults, you know, you're really not supposed to have like more than like six teaspoons you know, this is like different between men and women and children, um, six to eight or something like that, you know, depending on your gender. But, you know, a day of added sugars, right? And we're not talking about the sugars from like natural sugars, like vegetables and fruits with fiber. Um, and, you know, I mean, non-starchy vegetables are great, you know, to have on a sugar detox. We also include some starchy vegetables in moderation. Um, legumes, they'll have any carbohydrate has sugar. All right. So any carbohydrate is going to break down to sugar in the body. But what the, the difference is you want nutrient dense choices and you want ones also with fiber that will also then slow down that impact on your bloodstream. But so the juice that I saw was like 50 some grams of sugar. And then I looked at a candy bar, like a Snickers bar, and it was less. Yeah. You could literally drink, guzzle down the green juice with no fiber and thinking no you're fat. healthy, right? But you're literally doing worse than eating a candy bar. You're jacking up your blood sugar. That's a really good one. Yogurts are another one. Again, we have a whole shelf of yogurts on like 10,000 yeah. flavors, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like fat-free, you know, and you see commercials on it and it's natural, no preservatives, organic, gluten-free, like whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it says on the label. You have to be able to read the back of it, look for ingredients first, and identify any sugar synonyms, which is, again, hard to find because some people don't know what those are. And then you have to look at the, not the calories, you need to look first at, you know, the sugars because the added sugars won't always be listed there. That's not required. So added sugars might be listed. That's what you want to get out first. And then you want to look for just sugars in general. And then if you want to get even more specific, you can look at total carbohydrates minus fiber because the fiber is not absorbed and converted to sugar in the body. But, you know, it's all those nuances that people just look at the front of the label and are like, okay, cool. I went to, and I love this store, please, Trader Joe's, don't kill me. But I went to Trader Joe's the other day to put together a um, display for where sugar is hiding so I was at a really healthy food store and I picked up tons of stuff, oatmeal, you know, all this healthy food that looks like perfectly great on the front. But when you look at the number of sugar grams and number of teaspoons that converts to, even like I said, my mom, she was like helping with this project. She was like, what, what, this, this is unbelievable. You know, like banana, um, dried bananas, dried fruit, like all those condensed sources of sugar, they just add up. You know, so you just got to be aware of them. Absolutely. Um, oh, a quick side note. So say you have a, a, a number for the carbohydrates and then you subtract in the fiber, like you said, doesn't always add up to the sugars. What is the what is the difference? Where does that come from? When, the my, you know, you subtract the fiber and there's still some num there is a percentage missing. Well, you know, there's other, there's other things like, you know, sugar alcohols that might be, you know, in there, there's naturally occurring sugars. Um, so sugar alcohols, again, are something that is triggering the sweet tooth. And we should definitely talk about artificial sweeteners because that's a whole nother topic where people <laughs> are, 
consuming those thinking they're not having any sugar, but that also causes a, a myriad of symptoms and sweet cravings. So I think um, we really just have a lot of education to do, and that's what we do more specifically in a program where you actually have like an hour, you know, to go through and ask those questions. But, um, you know, kind of like educating yourself and knowing what to look for, you kind of start to bypass the front and you turn things like I just bypass front of everything now and I turn it over to the back. You know, even, you know, raw, my, you know, uh, a lot of bars right now, if you look at the bars that are out there, they're really high in sugar and they should be considered a treat, really. I mean, even if they're real food ingredients, some of those just eaten alone, if you don't have protein and fat to balance those out, um, you have to be able to keep that in context again. So there's just a lot of really tempting things out there. And in, you know, the, the program that we have, we really just focus on real food. And that's why I'm excited to partner with you because that's what you do. We talk about that a lot. Definitely. Yes. So we'll get to that and talk about the sugar detox bundle. But it's, it's really um, thrilling to me to have that opportunity because I think people get really anxious about cooking and spending a lot of time. And I don't spend more than five minutes cooking, you know, for myself. <laughs> and I still can manage it. But that's why people go to those convenience foods, right? I mean, it's for convenience. It's for the bars. We're all really busy. So the fact that... Um, you know, cooking real food has become a chore sometimes. That's why I'm excited to have you um, collaborating about that. But anyway, so on to the next question, I suppose. We've got a lot to chat about. <laughs> so your cookbook comes out in the... Oh, you know, right. The yeah. Spring, right? We actually, we have actually... We I'm do, just kidding. You know, we do meal plans in the program. Uh -huh. so my partner likes to cook, so that's good. But I made her, um, when we were designing them, like, okay, pretend you're cooking for me because I want, like, like five, 10 minutes at the most, like nothing complicated. So we put together, um, for people that want more structure, because it, sometimes it can be easy just to have structure. Um, we put together meal plans and recipes and shopping lists. And if they want to just, you know, get stuff delivered to their door, we're like, yeah, let's go with Kelly on the go. But I, I write recipes that are like what I eat. They're really just like throwing ingredients together. And it's like, here you go. Like, well, there's, I mean, there's definitely a good place for that. Yeah, well, I hope so. Yes. That's that's what I'm here for. It's just well, if it's the difference between making an excuse and going and cheating with something really bad and just doing something simple on your own. Yeah, just making it know, work. It's yeah. a choice, yeah. Exactly. Sure. Right. So what's the – I know you have so many other questions, but uh, – We have some. It looks like I have a couple. Uh, I came in from Instagram. Okay. And um, – and we can definitely talk about artificial sweeteners and everything if you want to. So that's another sure. Um Well, let's let's do that. Okay. Let's All right. Cool. So that. I just want to put that out there that um, there are on a sugar detox, we eliminate sugar, right? So even the ones that we would include in moderation, the added sugars, like raw honey with nutrients. Um, Anything with nutrients, molasses, raw maple syrup, like something like that might be good to sweeten a treat. Um, but we have treats on our program that actually I think taste good, particularly after you get like that sugar taste out of your system. Um, we don't even add sugar to our treats in our program. And there's options for that if you want to have a treat. And that's part um, of the detox program. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We actually include that because... We want it to be sustainable, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the biggest things, that people go on these short-term fad diet detoxes for three days or whatever, and then that's kind of like cool. You know, it's a cleanse. They feel like they did something, but they don't keep it up, and what's, yeah. the, you know, what's the real point? So we have a longer program. It's officially 21 days that you go through because it takes your system a while to adjust to a detox really fully and then to reintroduce foods. But we coach through 30 days because we want people to prep and then reintroduce. Um, but we do include treats because at one, pipe, at one point, you know, you might want to have a little something that's more treat-like. Um, or you can eat out on this program too. You have to be able to live your life. You know, and I, you can eat a sugar-free, you know, um, diet and maintain that. Honestly, you really can. But I just want to say about artificial sweeteners because I think that people may turn to those 
but they're doing not only damage to those triggering those sweet cravings, but when we put something sweet in our mouths, evolutionary from an evolutionary perspective, that is why we, we wanted those foods. So, right. So like in the summer months, um, when things are plentiful, we want to store up on all those great sweet, you know, fruits and foods. Um, but then, you know, we kind of go into a mode where we don't need all of that, right? We're a little bit more sedentary and, um, you know, kind of eating with the seasons in nature. That's why October is a great time to do a detox because there's no holidays and you don't have to worry about like summer fruits and stuff. We have some fruit on our program, but you're not really going to be like, oh, like everywhere. Um, but I think that artificial sweeteners really should be avoided at any point in terms of their um, coming out more and more. I think we'll see. And I get into it because of my my connection to the university where I see some of this more, you know, advanced research, but the microbiome is really important. And you know that from an AIP perspective, right? So, it's, it's, right. So the, the gut health, we, we are really healing the gut on a detox, um, strengthening it. We also address stress and lifestyle factors, which also can incorporate into that aspect, but the microbiome imbalance and things that happen from the artificial sweetener perspective are also something that, I don't know that I would recommend people really um, have any of those. Now, you know, some of those um, like stevia, that's green leaf, that's or an extract that's really not um, processed might be an option in small quantities if it doesn't trigger your sweet tooth. Personally, I find that if I have too much of that, I want more sweet things in general. So I've really had to check myself on even some of those like, more either keto or paleo or like approved sweeteners because I just get sugar cravings from them because my, my palate, and this is why, you know, it's a human body response. We're conditioned from our internal perspective, evolutionary, but also the dopamine response, which is the feel good hormone that happens when we eat something sweet or consume sugar. We literally have that receptor, that thing going on in our brain. And that's why it's almost when people say I'm addicted to sugar, you kind of really are because it's a, it's a neurotransmitter, you know, it's like happening in your brain. So those little Absolutely. taste buds you have on your tongue are there for a reason and they're sending signals. And so that actually is not your fault, but so you have to remove it to stop that from happening. And so triggering all of that and affecting the gut in ways we don't fully know. Correct. And the chemical breakdown and uh, you know just the chemical uh, that is so chemical in nature right. pretty scary right so try to like you know if you think about like starting small that's where you want to start and this is coming from the girl who put four splendas in her tea every day with multiple you know multiple glasses of that and mm -hmm. i would drink um you know in my pat you know diet soda whatever like i mean that stuff it's not really helping your waistline if that's what you're thinking, um, because you know, you're still signaling your body thinks you're eating something sweet. So it may, you know, reduce or may release the same response with your hormones. You know, when you eat something, when you eat a carbohydrate, you actually, you know, your body will take that it's for use for energy. So it breaks it down to glucose because you need it to live, right? You need glucose to run your brain and things like that. We don't need a lot of it though. Um, and that's where the whole, the, the you know, ke uh, ketogenic diet is very popular. That's a whole nother thing, which happens sort of organically in a sugar detox, but that's another day. Mm. So we can get into that another day. That's a lot. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff to unpack. So, but so your body, your pancreas will signal the insulin to take that glucose out of the body, put it into the cells where you need it to live, and then it'll store it into the liver and then into your muscles as glycogen because you need that later when you're not eating, when you're fasting or in between meals, which is why you don't want to be eating every two hours, right? You want to go several hours, which after, you know, you eat more on a real food or detox plan, you don't get hungry every two hours. You're really not. You forget about food which is kind of like enlightening for people that don't have that experience, which I did not have that experience until it took some time. So your body takes that. And then when you need it, it takes that out, you know, and uses it. But if you have too much, if you have that excess, 
then there's only so much your body can store, right? So your muscles will play a factor, your, your own genetics, like all these things play a factor in how much you can store, but there's, there's a limit to those bins. When they get full, it goes somewhere else and that gets stored as fat, right? And so that's where the cycle comes in. It's not just the cravings, but that's where, you know, is, is, is you're jacking up your insulin so much, your cells start to not be receptive to it. And that's what my dad, you know, was happening because they start to not taking it. They don't take in the glucose anymore. It's like they're, they're, they're just like, you know, it's an annoying neighbor, right, constantly knocking on the door. And you start to ignore them because you're so irritated. You're like, this is too much. This is too much. And then you just don't take it in and then it circulates in the bloodstream and that's where the, you know, the diabetes comes in. So it's kind of a cascade of symptoms where everybody's on a different continuum, but it's very interesting to learn about the science. And that's, again, what we talk more about in the program, but you don't have to worry about that if you just kind of follow the basics of, you know, a balanced eating style, you know, protein, fat, vegetables, and you know, the detox really gets a lot more specific into that, but that's my spiel on the hormones and the response and why the artificial sweeteners going back to that are not helping you in terms of your sweet cravings or really anything else in terms of your internal microbiome health, which is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we mentioned hormones like the, the insulin, but uh, is there any I'm sure there is, but if you wanted to talk about any other like hormonal things uh, uh, that can be triggered or autoimmune, anything like that, I'm sure you mentioned that there's this cascade of things that can happen. Uh, what do you most commonly see or is it just different for? You know, it's different for everyone. The people that come through my program, I mean, there's some that have like health conditions and we always recommend you consult with your, your doctor. Um, whether that be, you know, an integrative practitioner, which we love to hear that you're working with or whatever, whatever position, you know, if you are on medications, you can work with them. And, you know, honestly, it's a real food program. We don't have any pills, potions or, you know, powders to take. So typically it's actually a good thing to do for any condition. Um, but you always want to work with that professional. Um, in terms of the, the hormones, you know, I wrote an article about nine surprising reasons you might be craving sugar because there are also reasons in terms of micronutrient deficiencies that you might be more, um, you know, wanting sugar. And that's also why we want to turn to nutrient-dense real food because micronutrients can also throw you off. And that happened to me as well, which is why I learned more about that. But like magnesium deficiency, you could be craving chocolate. Chocolate's really good, um, high magnesium, so or um, various other types of, you know, foods, you know, nuts and seeds, um, pumpkin seeds, things like that. Now, if you are on an autoimmune plan, you can do a sugar detox because you can just take those things you normally have triggers to and modify that so you can remove those. And we are, you know, experienced in knowing what those things are. Like, I don't eat eggs. Um, you know, I'm sensitive to some, some FODMAPs in particular because of my digestive past and my digestive health. So we can definitely tweak it to that level. Um, the other thing that's important to know, you know, stress and sleep, stress alone can raise your insulin and that can cause sugar cravings. Um, lack of sleep is also, you know, something that regulates your natural hunger hormones and satiety. So all those things encompass what people don't even realize a sugar detox can do for you. And so at the end, you can get clearer skin, you can have improved digestion. All those things internally will help an autoimmune condition because you're just reducing the inflammation internally. Right? Body as well, I bet. Yep. So that internal inflammation can help a myriad of of conditions and just people that may not have something like really diagnosed, you just feel better. And people that just want to lose, you know, a little bit of, of fat sometimes, you know, that's, that's the other thing that can be um, helpful. If you change the way that your plate is balanced and your macronutrients, sometimes that also happens as well. So it's really um, at the beginning of it, we set goals and we try not to make it all about, um, appearance or anything like that. We really try to make it the bigger why. 
And all of those things that people say, like, I want to have more energy to run around with my kids or, you know, just things that are really important. Like, what is life for? Mm -hmm. Right. What is life for if we can't live it and feel good, like getting up every day and actually having energy and like, what's the point of eating healthy if that's not the ultimate goal is to try to prevent like all these chronic conditions we have are preventable through diet and lifestyle but it's hard to do. And that's why a community like yours and the program that we run makes it a lot more, um, I think rewarding, but also you need that support, like that motivation to help you when, you know, you just kind of feel like, well, maybe I'll just like go off. And some people come, like they come to us from all ways. Like some people are eating really good, maybe like a low fat whole grain diet and they just kind of, their eyes open. But then there's the people that are eating like standard American diet. And that's like crazy, right? Like even any small change you can do will benefit you in the long run just by getting sugar out of your diet. Because like I said, there's no real value to that. And if you look even at the conventional world, they don't recommend you have a lot of sugar either. So it's not something like woo-woo and holistic. Like this is pretty much well accepted. Sugar can also, you know... um, you know, feed cancer cells. So you see people on the ketogenic diet for their therapeutic diets, but that's, you know, a lot of it is because it helps with not feeding, you know, the cells. And so did I answer your question? I'm really off on a tangent. So I'm not just... (laughs) Um, Yeah, you answered a couple of my questions. Good, good, good. I'm glad. We talked talked about a lot of things in one there. I just went off on a rant. (laughs) That's that's fine. I'm going to take a sip of my bone broth. Oh, lucky you. Lucky you. Um, Yeah. I love love that you have those because, again, that's one thing that we have on our program, but I don't want to make my own bone broth. So I love that you yeah. have it pre-made. <laughs> you have two bone broth too. That's great. <laughs> I really like that one. Yeah. That's so we, awesome. have the, we have the beef bone broth, chicken, and then uh, chicken with turmeric. Yeah. Lo- love that little mm-hmm. superfood boost. That's, that's great. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, you mentioned going into a sugar detox. Um, I didn't know that you do include uh, a couple of things. You don't have to go really into that, but the honey and um, molasses, I guess it's accompanied by micronutrients. Yeah. But, um, are there other tricks or, um, techniques for me? It my kind of my only, um, strategy right now is not to have the stuff at the house. Yeah. That's a good strategy. (laughs) But, um, that's one thing you can do. So are, are, do you also within your training, do you give tips and tricks or are there, is there anything out there that's absolutely every day so we do weekly emails we do live education sessions we do daily posts we're like just we love to disseminate information but i would say um for blood sugar specifically i think you had mentioned to me when we were just chatting the other day something about apple cider vinegar mm-hmm. that's really um you know, something that's really easy to... Cinnamon came to mind, too. Yeah, yeah, and cinnamon. So cinnamon is a natural, has natural compounds that can, you know, kind of balance your blood sugar. So just putting a little bit of cinnamon in your your coffee um, or your recipes or apple cider vinegar. There's a cleansing drink that some people hate, but if you want to really kind of get cleansed, you can do a morning drink of lemon Apple cider, raw apple cider vinegar, that's important, unfiltered, Mm -hmm. Um, not the other stuff. That's important to include. Um, So that with, I put some cinnamon in it to make it kind of sweet tasting. And you can drink that um, either warm or, you know, cold. I I think that's a nice cleansing way to start your day just to get your digestion going. Apple cider vinegar helps with the digestive process. And so that helps break down you know, the sugars and things like mm-hmm. that. So kind of gets your digestion is really important when you're thinking about a sugar detox as well. So those are two, I would say, and just awesome. really quick hits. Well, that's good. I, I know there's no, there's not a lot of tricks. You got to do the work and yeah. Or, you know, you gotta, you gotta be open to it. Just, you know, we, we have people, some people are like all in and, and want to do it, you know, really full out. Some people just want to, 
you know, try one thing and that's cool. We're not like, we're not the police of you. If you Mm -hmm. kind of, you know, want to go and eat something with sugar in it, it's like, you're not gonna, in the context of it, maybe nothing bad is going to happen to you. But I think it's just that overconsumption and not being really mindful of it, that a sugar detox can help and give you some new ideas and also some real, um, realistic tips and tricks because who's going to go you know you can read a book great that's boring or you know it sits there on my shelf right I'm like oh cool but as you go through like every step like it's like you just do one thing a day it just makes a lot more easy and realistic and achievable okay that's great I guess um kind of going along with that I'm going to go to uh, one of our questions up here Sure. And I guess this is like going into a sugar detox. Probably there's some some fear, but uh, she says, "What would it feel like to go through a sugar detox? Are there side effects, both positive feelings and negative feelings?" That's a great question. I think there is a lot of fear around doing a sugar detox, um, unless you're really gung ho about it and you're just like, "I'm a type of person that goes all in." I gotta say that when I first thought about doing this. Probably I didn't really do it at least six months, maybe longer, probably longer, honestly. Um, We've made our program a little bit more flexible because there are certain things that we feel are, you know, important to be able to get past that, like roadblock. But when I thought about, like, thinking about designing my own before I did that, I was going to do, like, you know, another sugar detox and I don't know that I really got it until a couple, you know, real tries. Um, so I think from that perspective is that you might, if you're not eating real food now and you're doing more standard American diet, which I honestly don't know how many of your community or your listeners um, here are on that, you know, path. I, I don't really know. So you know, you, you may have more symptoms. There may be like the detox symptoms in the first week where you feel a little bit worse. And that's where we actually take you through it. We make sure one, that you're eating enough and that you're balancing your macronutrients properly. Cause that's really an important thing. A lot of people think detox means not eating. And a lot of times we actually have to tell people to eat more. Right. And you got to feed the organs that we're like, the- you're not eating enough. <laughs> Eat more food and you'll feel better. So that's one thing. Because women particularly were used to like, it, you know, if they're used to calorie counting, we don't count calories on the program. And so it's, it's a totally different mind shift for somebody that's used to the like calorie counting. Yeah. Um, and so you might, you know, feel like a little bit more tired. And then we try to help you tweak your macronutrients again depending on your activity level and number of carbohydrates you really need. There's also different types of foods that you can um, eat. You can also balance your electrolytes. Um, We work through that process in terms of making sure you have enough sodium. Um, That's another thing that can happen. It's kind of like the detox flu, similar to, I guess, like the the ketogenic flu, right, that you hear of because you're, you're basically, your body is switching its energy its energy source from glucose to fat burning. And so it takes a little bit of while for your body to adjust to that process. And you're never really one or the other. People get that confused too. It's like, you're always kind of like, you can convert protein to glucose in small amounts, but it's not an efficient process. So it's not as if it's not like eating protein is the same as eating sugar because it's a much faster conversion and process, right? And the same thing with fruit. The fruit converts differently in the process. It goes through a different pathway. Like different things go through different pathways. And so the way we had the program built, if you just follow it, like just generally speaking and how you build a plate, after that first week, things get a lot better. And second week, you're like, oh, well, I'm ready to go, you know? Mm -hmm. And then the third week, you're kind of like, all right, I feel like I'm not as hungry. I feel like I'm not craving sweets. 
and you're like, I can just keep this up. Now what I'm doing? And now it's like the end of the program. So now we're reintroducing foods and people probably really don't go that route because that's why we don't do it for three days because you just can't go through that process in three days. Um, Cause we're busy and it takes a while for us to even adjust to like different types of, um, you know, options, you know? So I think from that standpoint, in the beginning, it depends on where you're starting. So to answer this listener's question is that you may experience some negative symptoms, but that's just your body kind of getting the, the, the change in energy and the, the transition. But it's not like it's going to take forever. It doesn't last that long. And then you start to see improvements. Now, if you are coming to us from like more of a clean eating, like paleo ish style, then you can go more advanced right away and kind of go more into like, how can I take my health to the next level? Right? Like what else can I try? What else do I need to work on? What else in my life do I need to work on? So we try to make it so that it's customized to every individual. But at the end, you'll have increased energy, you'll have improved sleep, you'll have um, better digestion, potential better body, can, you know, composition, fat loss, which people might want, um, if that's in, you know, a goal of someone, which isn't always, you need to gain, you know, muscle, and that could also help. Um, you have, um, you know, just better moods, you're not as hungry as often, you um, just understand your relationship with food and how it impacts your body more and understand what foods work best for you. Because my podcast partner, my partner in this program, we are all about forging your own path and figuring out what works best for you because that's all that really matters. It doesn't matter what works for somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's great. I'm, I'm glad you've gone into a lot of these different things because, um, it's important that you obviously uh, the sugar is such a big component, but you could tell that what you're doing is very holistic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I don't think that people realize that they see sugar detox and they're like, Oh, I can't do that. I got a vacation or I got to travel or, and you know, until we have that conversation, we kind of like ease people's concerns and it's like, Oh, okay, well I can make this work within my current paradigm. And it's like, all right. This wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, whoever's anyone out there listening, you can still uh, ask a question here, and uh, we can definitely have Beth answer that for you. I have a few questions from Instagram. Looks like you kind of already covered a lot of it. Um, I'm glad. One is, I'm assuming uh, this person just said. Uh, can I ever really break it? So I'm assuming they mean the addiction and you kind of just covered that. It seems like it's, it, it's different for different people, but after a couple of weeks, it'd be pretty common probably for someone to say, okay, this is getting easier or I'm not craving, uh, you know, sweets so much. So I think it's hard for someone before that to even imagine what that looks like. It really but, is. So can I really break it? The addiction, I guess that would be, it's definitely a yes. But if you wanted to add or, or if that pretty much covered it. Yeah, it's definitely a yes, but it's just you have to start. You have to start somewhere. It doesn't matter if it's just one small itty-bitty thing. I had a client recently who came to me with a severe sugar addiction. And I, I hadn't really, you know, I was definitely running on sugar and experiencing the the negative benefit, you know, the negative, not benefits, the negative um, symptoms of that. And until now that I think back and how I feel now, that's when I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, it's just, you don't even know what's happening. But for him, I was shocked. Like, he was shocked. He was so shocked. Like he never thought he could actually get over it. And, you know, in a matter of three weeks, again, it just started to get so much easier that we continued to work together for three months just on various other things. But it just, you just have to start somewhere and just, you're never going to know unless you try. Mm -hmm. right? And if you, if you, if you 
fail. People are so worried about failing. But there is no failure. If you're trying something, you're going to probably, like, not do it, you know, the best. You have it in your mind that you're going to do all the time. But your brain is telling you something. And it's, that's the problem that people need to, I just want to understand. If you have a severe sugar addiction that you're kind of like, I can't break it. It's because you're actually, like, there are those hormones. There's are those neurotransmitters. There's all those things that are happening that are not helping by eating more of it, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not all your fault, but you also have to, like you said, do a little bit of work. You have to have yeah. some effort. And we're not like magicians, you know, this isn't like we teach you, but we don't do it for you. So you yeah. do have to like make some little attempt. Definitely. And, uh, you know, you mentioned there's no failure or, or if, yeah. if you make a mistake, you know, just get back into it. But yeah. obviously, uh, you want to be successful going into it. And so uh, another question that came in was, you said the synonyms of sugar. Uh, is there a list that can be found? That, well, so you can, you can Google it. Yeah, you can Google yeah. it. In our program, we have a list. We have a program guide. I can't rattle them off today. Obviously, mm -hmm. but we do you provide that. Uh, yeah, we provide. No, we have a whole workbook we designed, so it gives a embrace, avoid foods, embrace, avoid behaviors. Um, we have examples of how you should build your plate exactly. We give you um, recommended sources like yours, you know, which makes it again so easy. You don't have to think about any of this. If you just order your meals, you, we pretty much put together. Um, a, a plan that is compliant. So if you just want to start, you know, with that and then kind of take the program materials that we have and then pick and choose and do your own stuff after that, you don't have to do our recipes. You can just eat according to the embrace, embrace list. And we also take out inflammatory, um, other in inflammatory foods like inflammatory vegetable oils. And mm -hmm. so it's not just about sugar. It's about just the whole detox system but we focus on sugar and so we give you that list of sugar synonyms because it can get tricky like um maltodextrin um dextrose um fruit juice evaporated cane juice syrup like all these words some things you don't even know what they are so trying to avoid the things with like a lot of ingredients is probably the easiest thing to do really is like try just to eat like food in its whole form that doesn't have a label with 10,000 ingredients. I was going to say it goes back to eating real food. It kind of does. Yeah, I hate to be kind boring, of a but it kind of does to make yeah. it easy on yourself. Yeah. yeah. And that's the easiest thing to do is just try to eat like actual food substances versus manufactured food products. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, let's see. I have... One more question that came in from the audience, and it is in re regards to eating uh, cassava flour or cassava. So it says, does eating too many cassava chips and plantain chips mean I am addicted? So, um, yeah, I guess just... Yeah, well, that's a good question. question. That's yeah. a very, very good question. So does not mean you're addicted. Sugars, there's natural sugars, there's naturally occurring sugars, there's added sugars, there's artificial sweeteners. There's like all these different types of sugar type things, right? Now, cassava, you know, and plantains, they are a starchier um, option, right? In our program, we go about it in a way that those are nutrient dense and included, but in limited amounts, because again, we're really doing a sugar detox. Now, if you're more active, you know, if you're eating a whole bag of those in like lieu of other foods, then maybe that's an issue. We talk a little bit about emotional eating as well in the program and cravings in that regard. But those foods, I would say, depending on the source, there are good ones and there are bad ones in terms of like what else is included. So I know like, um, again, they're not like a sponsor or anything, but like Siete Foods is one that is pretty, they have like use like, I think coconut oil or, um, you know, different types of um, brands out there are doing some good things with the other things that they add in. 
but I would say like maybe you could you can definitely have those foods just a little bit more um, you can have them like you know daily even if you want just not all right you need to balance out with protein and fat and then non-starchy vegetables and then a little bit of fruit if you do dairy we recommend that you um, you know have an option and we, we do things different for vegetarians too so I hope that summarizes it. No, you're not addicted to sugar. Don't worry about the real food sources, but do look at the look at look at the label. Make sure you're not being fooled by marketing as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe just have like the whole plantain like fried up in some coconut oil versus a chip or make your own if the option isn't good. Um, cassava flour. We use um, you know like coconut flour and almond flour and you know, the typical things like that in some of our recipes just because um, they're a little bit lower, you know, glycemic. But I would say nutrient density in a general context is really important. So you're not doing anything horrible for yourself in that regard. Okay. To whoever answered that question, don't feel bad. <laughs> uh, uh, you've really given us some really great information. I'm so glad. Um, so I know you have a special deal for Paleo on the Go customers. Uh, for your sugar detox program. Can you let us know about that? Yeah, absolutely. So we want to give you guys a discount off of the program. So we have a special link, which hopefully you can share out in your social media. Um, I think it was in the newsletter, but if not, we can make sure that gets out. So we have it all lowercase, so it's easy to remember. bit.ly slash P-O-T-G detox, Paleo on the Go detox. So hopefully we can put that out again, but we want you to sign up through that link so you get our discounted rate, and that's going to be for the 30 days of coaching, all the program materials, nothing else you have to um, worry about. It's $97 we're giving you guys, um, which is huge value, we mm -hmm. hope, for everything you're going to gain from it. So use that link, though, to make sure you get the discount. Yeah, and again, so B-I-T-L. No, bit dot. It's a bitly link. It's, so it's, yes, it's written wrong. Bit dot ly. Yep. Backslash potg detox. That's right. Yeah. Got it right this time. Excellent. You got it. Yeah. And talk to us about your program, your your meal package, because I want people to know about that too, because we're super sure. excited. We actually have a new uh, sugar detox bundle, and that is, uh, I think it's ten meals, and it comes with a um, an extra soup a bone broth, and then a free pack of bacon. Sugar-free so, bacon is really hard to find, by the way. Sorry, I have to be protected yeah. about that. That's mm -hmm. really hard to find. Everybody asks that question, so that's very important. If you just get the bacon alone, get the bacon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it's not it's not free bacon for life, but we that's do have good. free bacon for, for that uh, program. And it is just – it's real food. Um, it's all AIP compliant as well. And it's just nutrient dense, fully cooked meals uh, that they're frozen and shipped right to your door. So they can work within whatever your lifestyle is. Um, if you're like Beth and you do a lot of short, like five minute cooking, uh, but you're not going to cook every day, right. it's a great supplement. And if you, you know, we're not going to argue with you if you want to eat paleo on the go three times a day. But uh, it's, it's just there when you need it. So, yeah, we have the Sugar Detox Bundle. And so this is all. You can just find it pretty easily at uh, paleoonthego.com. And just hit start here. And you'll see the different categories. We have a couple other meal bundles. We have a keto um, meal bundle coming out soon. But we do have a full uh, keto category and Sugar Detox category. And all of our food is AIP compliant. So, and that's really hard to find. So I just want to thank you again for putting that together because um, I think AIP is really tricky and that you actually have that prepared is amazing. Mm -hmm. And you actually have, you given us a discount off of that too. So $15 off of that mm -hmm. um, program with a special um, code as well, I think, right? I'm not sure if there's a code. I think it's just, um, I think what we did since it was... We did that when we were working with you, and I think it's just it's the discounted price right now. Okay, cool. I will have hopefully someone can 
chime in if I'm incorrect on that. I'll if definitely, not, we'll I'll make sure you get fifteen dollars off of that package for the detox program. <laughs> definitely. And if there's any problems, you can email us or call us, and our friendly staff will help you. But uh, yeah, I think it's it's just uh, it's at a sale price. And okay, so I, yeah, I covered pretty much. I covered a good amount for Paleo on the Go, so the, I feel good about that. Um, okay, let's see. I don't know if you, there, we didn't have any other questions, but it was great. You covered you so much and and just in a simplified way. So I, I definitely learned a lot and I'm sure that people on here really got a lot out of that. So thank you. I'm so glad. It's just great to have this opportunity and um, we'll be, you know, talking more. We're going to do a little interview for Wellness Warriors Radio. So I got to plug that. If you guys mm -hmm. are into health and wellness and you're a nerd like us, please listen. We have a new podcast called Wellness Warriors Radio. You can find it on all your platforms. And Dave is going to be a guest. Mm -hmm. Yay. And then you can find me at My Healthy Transitions Health Coaching. But hopefully if you have more questions, just post them in the comments and maybe sure. I can answer those too. Excellent. So, yeah, I was going to ask where to find you, but you took care of that. And I, I just want to go over the link one more time for that okay. awesome deal. It's um, bit.ly backslash P-O-T-G detox. And Awesome. Thank you, Beth. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you guys one, in our detox. One second. I might have. There is a code. Oh, there is. I'm so sorry. Ooh. It, we use the same code, POTG Detox. I thought we had a code. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, POTG Detox. POTG Detox. Um, sorry about that, but I'm glad that um, my team is listening in and <laughs> helped me out there. So, um, Anyway, well, thank you so much, Beth, and thank you, everyone out there listening and who will watch later. And I, I think you can post your questions and we can get to those as well. So thank you. Yeah. Have, a, have a great day.